Hi, Terrence. Good morning. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm amazing. I'm Tammy Reese with Hustle and Soul Magazine. How you doing, Tammy? I'm amazing. Happy Monday. Before we yeah. dive into your impactful film, When George Got Murdered, I have to know some background. The okay. day that George Floyd was murdered and the whole world got to see on their laptops, on their cell phones, on a TV screen, where were you and how did you feel? Well, I was actually coming from a friend of mine's house at the time. and. Um, uh, a couple of people called me and told me, yo, have, are you watching TV? Because remember, it was on all the TV. It was, on, it was on national news. And they were saying, yo, are you watching TV? I was like, no. Um, he was like, man, you need to turn the TV on. I was like, why? He was like, man, they got this video. They showing this video of this guy being, like, being, 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 being snuffed out by the cops. I was like, what do you mean? Mm. I was like, bro, I ain't trying to see no more cop shootings, man. He was like, he said, no. He said he didn't shoot him. He said he snuffed this guy out, I suffocated him. I was like, he said somebody was sitting there filming it and the cop was knowing he was being filmed and he was still doing it. So um, I went and uh, turned, turned, on, turned on the uh, news and it was still, they were still talking about it, but then they were showing, they had, uh, they, they had showed the whole video. But they were flashing back the different scenes of it. I was, I was seeing it, I was like, it just blew me away. And um, I, I, I have not felt so much rage <laughs> go to, to my body as I did that particular day. When I saw that, when 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 I when I when I that just really it, it just sent the rage just like seething through my body. I I, I don't even recall ever being that mad. And um, yeah, because yeah, um, I guess it was just a culmination of all the stuff that that we keep seeing happening. And uh, and then there was you know all these people were, were like chastising Colin Kaepernick because this is what Colin Kaepernick was talking about. Exactly, this, he this, sure this was. He did what he did. And so they, they was talking all this stuff and then. You know, then that happened. But one thing Montel just schooled me on, like since then, since George Floyd, there's been, well, this is about, I think Montel said this about three weeks ago. It's about, it's been about, I think the cops have killed like uh, just under 2,000 people since George Floyd. And uh, so now it's clearly over 2,000 because they just killed over the past, I think, I think two weeks, they killed about, I think like about 28 people. And you said and, since uh, George, so since 2020, this yeah, is mind blowing. This is mind blowing. I'm glad that you're waking people up. Did you talk to George's family before you made this project, or was it just something in your soul you just said I had to do? No, I just had to do. I didn't talk to his family. I uh, uh, we tried to um, we, we were uh, we, we were in the process of doing a um, a, a screen uh, set up a private screening for the family on uh, um, immediately after we finished it, but uh, it never. Um, it never materialized, but um, uh, but but what I wasn't going to do, and I and I've explained this before, what I wasn't going to do, I was not going to touch that issue itself of that actual killing out there on the street. You know, that's something that that you got to really be careful with trying to recreate. It's, that's going to be a hard mm-hmm. thing to recreate. Um, uh, that's that's going to be heavy. So what I did, I decided to come at it from a different standpoint. So I focus on the fact that. You know how it how this guy affected everyone inside the jail, and people who was you can remember everybody was stuck in their house watching all this stuff on TV. Oh, mm-hmm. So I saw so yeah, I, so I came at it from that standpoint. And then when I was watching TV, I heard that um uh, that the uh that the cops who uh, uh that 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 the guards there who worked there at the prison were um um were not being allowed to uh, uh, work the block where Sherman was being held, and I was like, wow, that blew my mind. So. I said, I'm going to add that in there. So I added that in there as well. So That blew my mind as well. And I'm glad you spread a light on that because African-American police officers were not allowed in the wing of where that police officer was. Um, They yep. felt as if the police yep. officer would be in danger, even though these black yep. cops are professional. Mm-hmm. Why would you not allow them to do their job, you know? Exactly, exactly. And and that, that was really disrespectful. That was really disrespectful, and um, but they still decided to go with that narrative like that. But that was that was really disrespectful, and uh, yeah. But other than that, man, I mean, I like this is the kind of film that you want to be able to tell from from a unique standpoint, which is why I picked the uh, particular standpoints that I came at it from, because you know we see we've seen all this stuff, and you know, you know, every time you turn around, it's something it, like this keeps happening, and uh, but when it happened to that degree where the whole world got involved. Because whole world. Was, yes. we never seen nothing where the whole world got involved. Right, people in Asia here. protesting and stuff, yeah. you know? 
Yeah, it was. Uh, that was. That was. That was. That was, yeah, that was heavy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, wow, this is crazy. You've never seen anything like it. How did you get the big names involved in the project, like Montel, Benny Siegel? Well, these are all people that you know that uh, either I knew or um, or we knew would fit the role. Uh, because all my films have uh, have uh, have a uh, 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 major names in them. So um, yeah, in this particular one, I wanted to make because you know you want to make sure you have familiar faces because it makes people want, it drives them to want to watch the film. Yeah, and uh, especially when you're telling a story like this, you want to be able to. It's hard to put a story. To t- it's hard to tell a story like this and do it with unknown actors, um, because it's not gonna. It's not gonna receive the right kind of attention. So you have to put actors that people are familiar with in these roles. How did you feel when the project was complete? What impact oh did you begin to make? Oh, it was. It was. It was just. It was it like. Uh, it was. It, uh, it was a sense of euphoria. It was. It was. It was. Um, it was, it, was, it was such a beautiful thing because, um, well, well, it was beautiful that it was done because, uh, we, because we finally got it done. But what I was upset about was that we didn't get it done in the time frame that I wanted to get it done because I wanted to have the movie out uh, um, uh, the first time during the trial, mm-hmm. uh, during the trial, when, 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 when our um, uh, uh, show was trial. I wanted to have it out then because it would have it gotten more attention so we okay so we said okay we're gonna release it uh on george floyd's uh the anniversary of his death and we missed that we missed uh, the second anniversary we we i mean the first we missed that one so we said well we, you know we we wanted to add more to it because it was, it was only supposed to be a short film at first and um uh it still is not it still is on the film itself is only 40 the, the actual the actual acting uh dialogue is only about 48 minutes long maybe 49 um, the rest is of uh, the people talking at the end, uh, which is like probably just as impactful as the film because those yes. people were actually recorded that themselves, and you know, and they they actually said where they were when they first saw it and how how it affected them. Uh, and D.L. And, Hughley, yeah, that's yeah, huge. Uh, Nicole Murphy, uh, Sister Helen Prejean, uh, 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 Red Man, yeah, yeah. So everybody really did. Just, I, I said, listen, just take your phone and record, you know, yourself because I went because that because that makes it more that makes it more real. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, we um we had a we had a um we had a lot of uh, 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 um rough times doing it because we were doing it during we were filming it during COVID and I did it with a small uh, uh, skeleton crew. I did it with a small crew because people were really nervous about being around a bunch of people. So um, I did it with a real tiny crew, and like I said, it was only supposed to be 22 minutes long. We ended up extending it to 48 to 49, and then we end up getting so we uh, with everything else we added, so we got the film. Um, up to 66 minutes. So, because uh, we had to get it over 60, I think 62, in order to not be t- totally considered a short film. So we um, we got it up to 66, and it, 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 it's perfect timing because you know when we screen it, it's, mm-hmm. it's at it's at a um it's at a length where the after we screen it we can have the panel discussions and things like that. So it's at that kind of, the film's at that kind of length where we can really be expand on it when we do live screenings. Now, the police officer who murdered George was recently sentenced to 21 years. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. What's next in this particular legacy of this film? Do you want to showcase it to universities and colleges? What's next for you in this project? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, um, um, we've, we've done several screenings. Uh, and uh, once the school uh, year start back, the college year start back, we have, a, we have a bunch of them coming up. We're going to be doing those screenings, those panel discussions, because this is the kind of film that Sparks conversation like crazy, so you know we we definitely want to keep doing the screen. We did we just did we did a huge one in Pittsburgh, and it turned out oh my god it was so it turned out really well. We did one mm-hmm. in Bryn Mawr, um, and we did a private screening uh, um, 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 for the mayor of a small town and and, and the city council. So yeah we um yeah we yeah we're going to keep we're going to keep doing these screenings because they you know they they keep the they they keep them they keep the dialogue going they keep the Absolutely. message going they keep you know they keep this thing in the news you know. So yeah, we want we definitely want to keep on doing these screenings because that's it's important to keep to keep because this this film is issue driven in a sense about driving the issue home and not just really just having a conversation and after the conversation is over that's it. This film allows that that conversation to kind of linger and expand upon because people go back to their their friends and talk about it and it just keeps it going. Then the movie comes on TV. Oh my God, I was at the screen and now the movie's on TV. 
And so right. keep the conversation going. So yeah, we're going we have a bunch of more screenings coming up. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think in September there's about four of them. Um, different, nice. different colleges. Yeah, and um, a couple a couple sponsors. Because what we do, like long as they got the long as there's sponsors in that market that can bring me and the film and the cast in, then we that's that's how we book it. But the, all the schools have the budgets to bring these sort of things in. So that's why we do that's why we pick the colleges to do that. And that's amazing. We'll definitely keep making an impact. I know the film touched me definitely. And I just wish you all of the best. Keep up the amazing work. Right. Where can people get in touch with you? Oh, it is, well, I'm, on, I'm on all the social media platforms. Uh, uh, it's Terrence Takeem on um, on uh, on uh, 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 IG, Terrence Takeem on Facebook. I got rid of my Twitter because um, they every time I say something, they you know they 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 like to you know you can't even say nothing on there. Mm. And uh, you know, so I just I just got rid of it. it it's just it's not even worth having because like you somebody if you have if you start going back and forth with somebody on there, they you know you say something that they think. Is, is not cool and it's really just regular stuff they'll they'll freeze they'll cut you off for like a week or two they did that to me two times i said you know what you can have it so i got rid of that twitter stuff um it's crazy because they was letting all these politicians see all this hateful stuff that was getting people killed and they wasn't you know but then yeah. when you see something that, that they feel is you know you, you have going back and forth with one of these one of these one of these nazis on there or one of these people supporting these these, these bigots and stuff oh they they got an issue with it so i got off of there but um, you can find me on uh, IG. I'm always on there. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. And uh, where else? Um, oh, and link. Uh, well, I'm doing a lot more LinkedIn because LinkedIn is more business. Yeah. Uh, uh, business oriented. So I'm doing a lot more LinkedIn than I have in the past because, they, you know, you know, it's a lot more uh, business driven, professional and things like that. So yeah, you can find me on those three platforms. And I'm always looking for new uh, projects. I'm always looking for new talent. So uh, follow me. At uh, Terrence Takim on all of those all of those platforms. Thank you so much, Terrence, for your value time today. Congratulations! Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.